Okay, thanks everyone for uh, coming back. Um, uh, as I was saying at the, the coffee break, we've saved the best till last. Um, uh, and uh, we're all going to go away uh, feeling much happier uh, after uh, the next presentation. It is my uh, absolute uh, privilege and uh, honour uh, to introduce uh, uh, our final speaker for today. Um, and. Uh, uh, someone that uh, uh, I understand has been at the, uh, the very uh, forefront of uh, uh, changing the way we think about uh, 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 measuring uh, national progress and uh, 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 achievement of sustainable development. So without further ado, my great pleasure to introduce uh, Dasho uh, Dorji uh, for uh, the final presentation today. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the original invitation to this meeting was sent to my colleague, the head of the National Environment Secretariat, Dr. Ugin Sewang. Unfortunately, he couldn't be here with, uh, with you today, and he's asked me to represent him. Uh, so I've edited what I'm going to read first is what the Secretariat has given me, which I edited drastically. And uh, then after, th after this, after I've read this, then I'd like to share some of my own thoughts about cross-national happiness and climate change with you. So, my niece wrote this and uh, Juanita said, it's very good Thai. And it says, Sawadi Kap. Uh, on behalf of the Royal Government of Bhutan, I'd like to express my sincere appreciation to IGES, to IISD, in collaboration with GTZ, IDRC, and UNESCAP for hosting this important meeting and the warm hospitality. Gross national happiness and climate change in Bhutan's context. Climate change today is one of the biggest challenges in the world and the bulk of humanity in our region is affected by it. The socio-economic development of Bhutan is based on the guiding principles of gross national happiness, a goal created for his people by our fourth king, Jigme Singhi Wongchuk. For almost 40 years ago, I mean, it was at a very different time. Since then, GNH emphasizes the need to develop the spiritual and material well-being of the people. Poverty alleviation, education for all, providing total health care within our capabilities, and conservation of our tradition, culture, environment are all ingre important ingredients for gross national happiness. These principles are accorded the highest priority in all our development plans. While Bhutan has made impressive progress in the last few decades, the country is now faced with serious threats from climate change. Not necessarily all bad. We'll talk about it a little later. The controversy on gl glacial disappearance is a source of great concern. Our mountains and glaciers, once called the water towers of the world, providing fresh water to millions and millions of people downstream, are now a posing threat as rapidly melting glaciers have now formed into huge lake numbering as many as 26, many of which are in danger of bursting any day. A natural phenomenon known as GLOF or glacial lake outburst floods. Such catastrophic events could cause grievous loss of life, property and infrastructure downstream, not only in Bhutan. We in Bhutan have almost 70% of our people dependent on subsistence farming and livestock rearing. The unpredictable weather pattern, warming temperatures, erratic monsoons and disappearance of water sources are an emerging threat to their livelihoods as well as to hydropower, a major source of Bhutan's revenue that finances development activities. Tropical diseases, which were once down only found in southern Bhutan, are now appearing in higher regions affecting human health and thus increasing the cost of providing health care services and putting a strain on our already meager resources. Bhutan is well known for maintaining its forests and further committing to the global community to maintain at least 60% of its forest cover for perpetuity by law. And my Prime Minister recently in Copenhagen uh, said that we would remain a carbon neutral uh, state. 
this further restricting human uh, no, where are we? However, such efforts are made at a heavy cost for the country as Bhutan is not able to capitalize on our forest wealth and resources, further restricting economic growth. Nor are we benefiting from carbon, cre from carbon credits under the Kyoto Protocol, which does not allow us to trade on forests existing before 1990. We stopped all our forestry activities in the mid-1970s, hoping that one day the world would rec recognize us. We make this commitment despite our status as a very vulnerable, small, landlocked LDC with a very fragile mountain ecosystem and with so many pressing social and economic development needs and priorities. Yet in order to live up to the commitment to good environmental governance, we have decided to take these decisions of giving our natural environment the highest pro uh, priority in protecting, protecting it in the hope that one day the world will recognize Bhutan's commitment and reward her for it. We know that climate change is having an impact on our fragile mountain ecosystem. Unusual weather patterns are affecting a large portion of our populations who depend so solely on subsistence farming and these are the most vulnerable communities. Yet many sections of society could benefit from climate change. Adaptation funds, however, are, and measures are required to rehabilitate these marginalized groups to cope with these new conditions as new opportunities arise. While we welcome efforts to reduce emissions do, through RED, R -E -D -D, countries that conserve large forest cover at great opportunity cost must be recognized and compensated. This should be in one area in which countries of the Asia-Pacific region must adopt a unified position. Adaptation is imperative and we welcome the early operation of the Adaptation Fund, but unfortunately the present level of financing for it is abysmal. We must call on and pursue with our development, developed partners to provide more funds. Well, that's what the government's told me to read out to you. <laughs> and I bet. But uh, no, uh, coming to uh, uh, now gross national happiness and, uh, and the thing is... Uh, a lot of you all, when you earlier presenters, when you all talked about, and I learned a lot from these presentations, you're also talking about, you're, you're talking in many different terms, but we all boil down to gross national happiness. It is, it is a condition, and it's something like, uh, we had an earlier uh, speaker from GTZ, happiness is something, one thing that you definitely cannot measure, because it's, it's something individual. So we're not talking about individual happiness here. So, we're talking about a national, a condition for national happiness. So, in my, in my terms, how do I feel is national happiness? Is the indicators should all point in the right direction. There should be democracy. There should be good governance, good environmental governance, human rights, justice for all, education and health and a variety of us, the maintenance of our traditions and cultures. We've, uh, the, our Prime Minister is very eloquent on this, I'm not as eloquent as he is, but these I consider are the pointers which all should be in the right direction for the nation as a whole to enjoy cross national happiness. When it comes to climate change, how does it affect us? We are happy providing our neighbors are happy. Our happiness will be encroached on and put to danger and put to risk if our neighbors are not happy. And our neighbors will, must be happy, not only just ha-ha happy, but economically happy. Our neighbors must also have land. And the threats coming to Bhutan, if you look at the recent scenarios being given to us on the internet uh, from... Uh, uh, I think the film uh, by uh, President, uh, uh, Vice President Al Gore showing that how much of Bangladesh and, the, uh, and India would go underwater if the water temperatures were, and the sea levels were to rise. They say it doesn't affect India and Bangladesh only. It affects Bhutan. It is very important for Bhutan to make sure that the, these people do not uh, lose their lands because otherwise the population pressure would come on to us. It is very important for Bhutan to have Nepal. 